Ainda que a pandemia tenha causado uma grande crise em todo o mundo, o momento também é de mudanças e de oportunidade para analisar o trabalho que realizamos. Mais que discutir como e o que, é importante pensar em por que fazemos o que fazemos. Essa é a lição que a produtora Liz Lenz Müller, chefe de estudos do EAV, nos propõe. O EAV é um dos mais importantes programas de conexão e capacitação de profissionais de cinema do mundo. Ela também conversou conosco sobre o trabalho atual do EAV e de suas previsões para o futuro da indústria. So Liz, thanks for talking to us today from Paradiso Project. I would like to begin talking to you as a producer that you also are in, in Denmark and also head of studies in the EAV. How do you see this moment so particular in, in the world and what especially, specifically EAV does as a training program a program that connects people all around the world. You know, if I, if I start with how I see this moment, uh, I think that any big crisis like this is always uh, a very good chance to, to look at what you are doing and change some habits. Uh, and and um, because you're sort of shaken out of your uh, normal everyday procedures and how you go about things. So I think it's a great opportunity to also make uh, some changes for the better. Of course, it's also very difficult and uh, I'm sure a lot of companies will uh, not make it uh, because it's super difficult times also financially. Uh, but I also think it's a time where you can uh, look at how you do things, why you do things, not the least. I mean, when things become this urgent as they are in this moment, I think it's a very good time to look at especially the why. What is it that you want to put out into the world? What kind of voice do you want to be or represent in the world? And and that I, I view as something positive or at least as a potential for something positive. We don't really know how it ends right now, but but I'm, I'm quite um, excited to see what kind of change it might bring about. What is EAVE and what does EAVE does it's very famous many people heard about it but sometimes people don't really know what a program like EAVI yes, does. EAVI is a producer's workshop first and foremost uh, it's been running for over 30 years uh, it has three annual workshops for the same people it's highly highly competitive to get in because so many people want to get in uh, we take around 50 participants every year Roughly half of them bring projects, uh, the other half come to uh, with a focus on their career development, company development. We use the projects as uh, cases, so we use them as, uh, you know, as material to base the, uh, the teaching on. Yes, if you bring a project, you will have a lot of uh, input on that particular project and, and it will probably develop over the year, but we are as a program more interested in, in the people. We are focused on the producers who come. Uh, you can bring a writer, if you have a project, uh, you can bring the writer for the first two workshops. Uh, we also do take a limited number of people who are not producers like other industry professionals. It can be uh, somebody from a film fund or it can be somebody from a TV station or a lawyer uh, who specialized in media. Or so, you know, so a, a certain number of other professionals And um, the first workshop has a headline called uh, development. So everything development related from script content, uh, uh, development budgets, financing, um, legal things, all of that. The second one is focused on packaging. So everything setting up the co-production, if it's a co-production or how to, how to approach financing, all of that. And the third one is focused on the market and for the third workshop we have a lot of decision makers coming that you uh, talk to you have one-on-one -on -one meetings they give you advice you pitch to them but all of it at the same time is also about building networks for the future and all of it is also about uh, learning and a method and approach to to being in the business approach to producing so for instance we we are not specialized in one particular format a lot there are There are workshops who specialize in serial formats or documentaries. We take everything. We take documentaries, we take TV series, we take feature films, we take animation. Um, because it's not so much about the format as it is about 
the approach to being a producer and to producing. This is not pandemic related in a way. The pandemic has just made it more urgent. We always really have the why in the center of everything we teach and talk about it. Yeah, but both the why, why are you doing what you're doing? Why are you doing it this way? Uh, why is your project set up that way? And, and so we, we do really ask these questions because if you can answer that, you will be much more uh, likely to do something uh, special you know, extraordinary, uh, and you will be much more likely to do it well and keep on doing it. Because if you if you're just, you know, running and running and running and never have a reflection about what you're doing and why you're doing it, uh, you tend to not develop so much as a person, as a professional. So, so the why is always uh, very central for us in everything we do. We try, of course, to help people concretely with their projects, with their situation, but what we do in terms of training is that we teach people a method, an approach to things. We try to uh, encourage them to also not look at it as I am in an industry, but I am the industry. So uh, if things need to change, I need to do my part to make it change. So we also want people to be uh, agents of change and, and you know, and. Also in, in countries where there's, for instance, no uh, training, a lot of the participants who come to us, they are actually active in their country in trying to train people to be more professional. So, so we also look at uh, the training as uh, rings in water, so that if we have somebody coming to IAVE, uh, and then they go home and use what they have learned to teach more people, that's perfect for us. You know, I, I think we want people to identify as professionals and act as professionals because because we live in a project economy and because it's so difficult, uh, there is always the risk that you really just have tunnel vision about the one project that you are working on right now. I want to get this film made. And then when you get to the next project, you're going to be in the exact same situation as you were with the previous one because you haven't worked on, you know, changing the situation. So we really do put a lot of focus on that, you know, an approach to being in a business and and uh, being part of the business uh, and, and trying to change it in a better way. How do you feel about the producers of the future? Are you already thinking about it? Like not only having the pandemic, pandemic into mind, but also in mind, but also the future, the VOD, streaming, it will change something. People are watching so much more, you know, streaming. First of all, I want to say that uh, traditionally in, in the way that the platforms produce, the producer is not as important as if you're an independent producer. And, um, and I think that there is a worry uh, that the producers uh, could somehow structurally become more or less redundant. On the other hand, if you look at how the system has worked, especially in Europe for a long time, the producers are really uh, the ones, the producers and some TV stations, I should say, are really the ones who discover talent, discover and de develop new talent. And uh, so I think that that it gives you uh, some hope because at the moment the platforms are not doing that at all so i think that the producers are still needed i think that we don't really know what what the market and uh, even in terms of platforms will look like in in a year or two or so so every everybody is on edge now i'm i'm old enough to have also uh, experienced the change from analog to digital where the whole market was in uproar for, for a while. And, and uh, I think it's a little bit the same right now. Everybody's trying to survive somehow until the business models are, are there. Um, what I'm really very optimistic about is I think that there has been such a immense uh, growth in producer talent in the last 10 years. I think there are so many really great young producers. And I'm, I'm pretty sure, I mean, I don't have all the answers. I don't know anybody who has all the answers, but I'm pretty sure that if we keep training them, they will also be 
uh, able to come with the answers and be part of the answers because uh, they will, you know, have the strength and the innovation and the adaptability. I think that that is really maybe one of the words that are that fit everybody like us in thinking about the future of cinema, the future of making movies, the market. How how did you prepare? How do you see this future? I think that it, that it might be even more important to to go to the places where you can meet the most people in one place because then it's easier to continue online afterwards. Um, but also workshops where you get, because I, I always thought that, you know, a cocktail party or a quick meeting in a festival where people have 10, 15 minutes max, it doesn't really allow you to know who you're talking to. Uh, you know, they can be super nice, but whether you have the same kind of taste or you like to work in a certain way or not, you will not know that so quickly. So I do think that attending, for instance, workshops where you will be together for a longer time can be can be a very, very important basis for for continuing an online. You were talking about production and co-production. It's a very important issue for EAFI. How do you feel this co-production market? You said it didn't change that much. Do you think it will change regarding the local funds? Some countries are facing problems, as we already said, that is where we talk. The selection will be tougher. Less projects will get made for a while. Pragmatic and financial limitation can sometimes force uh, creative solutions that are better. If you're not forced to do it, you won't spend the time finding the solution sometimes. So, so I, and I also think that there could be an advantage in, at, at least maybe not so much in Brazil, but at least in, in parts of, of Europe, um, sometimes projects have become too professional. And by that, I mean, it's, it's everything is so smooth and you do not take the time to make it special. You do not take the time to make it different. And I think that if you are forced to do that, sometimes you develop film language, you, you make something which is more remarkable, you uh, impact people in a new way. I, audiences develop very fast. I don't think that cinemas are uh, going to disappear. I do think they're going to change how they do things. I think there will be more uh, community cinemas. I think there will be more cinema on demand where people uh, can, you know, arrange and come and get films that uh, when, when they have, you know, gathered enough people who want to see a film and stuff like that. I think uh, that there can be a great advantage in trying to do something digital and, and theatrically at the same time. Right now, the distributors don't want that in many countries. But I do think that from an audience perspective, uh, that will be perceived as a huge opportunity and a huge advantage. And I also actually think that from a commercial perspective, it could end up being a better solution than what we have right now. And up until the platforms, uh, there was not a, a real uh, willingness to watch things with subtitles in the bigger territories. The small countries have, have had to do it all the time and they are used to it, but the bigger countries like the UK or Germany or France, they didn't really want to watch subtitle material, which also meant that there was less uh, space for other language films and smaller territories. I, I see that changing in a positive way. I see the platforms having trained people to actually watch subtitling material. And I think that's a huge advantage, which, which would also be uh, opening possibilities for, for films from, from everywhere in the world. Audience now have been born into a completely visual world. So they are much more savvy when it comes to reading pictures and images and narratives. And, and I do think that that will also result in a much more, in a much bigger variation of what we are able to produce and have audiences for. A equipe do EAV sabe que o futuro do cinema está nas mãos das novas gerações. 
e por isso aposta nos novos talentos. Nossa série continua e muitas ideias sobre como construir esse futuro ainda vem por aí.